Hi and welcome to today's LEGO Technic video. What I'm going to be talking about is this particular configuration of two differentials that I've been playing around with for a while now. Uh, I actually used this particular design to create uh, one of my videos where I've got a fast forward and a slow reverse car. And the way that worked is that uh, this particular configuration allows two different paths between the input and the output. Uh, so we've got this path on the right there which is a one-to-one -one gearing ratio and the path on the left which is a one to three and if we just turn uh, the input you can see that both paths are being used and the output gearing ratio is somewhere in between that one to one and the one to three however if we for example hold still the left path which is the one to three then it's forced to use the right path and the output ratio is simply a one to one and on the other hand if we hold down the one to one path and rotate then the output gearing is a one to three and I use this idea to create um, a car which went forward quickly and slowly in reverse by uh, using a ratchet system to prevent rotation of either the left or the right depending on the direction of the input. And so what I'm going to be presenting today is a mathematical analysis of this particular configuration and to um, demonstrate why I had a problem with that slow reversing car where in fact the reversing mechanism didn't work the way I expected whereas the forward mechanism did. So in order to analyze this configuration what I've done is I've drawn it on a diagram. Um, so what we have here is D1 and D2 representing the two differentials D1 and D2. We've got our input over here represented by I, our output over here represented by O, and then we've got that top path where we've got that gearing ratio of 1, and the bottom path I have generalized that to be a 1 over N gearing ratio, in this case we've got a 1 over 3. Uh, in order to do the analysis, what I've done is I've represented this top path gearing ratio to be x times i, or the speed of the uh, axle, and the bottom one to be y times i. And we'll use that to analyze this um, configuration and work out the equation relating the output to the input in terms of the, the variable x. So in order to analyze this diagram, what we're trying to do is find out the output to input ratio. Um, so we can start with this differential here. We know that from the uh, relationship of a differential, we know that the output is given by the average of the two inputs. So in this case, the output O is going to be given by the average of input 1, which is Xi, plus the uh, second input, which is Yi divided by N. So Yi over n and all of that divided by 2 to give the average and from that straight away we can see that by dividing through by i we've got that the output to input ratio is equal to x plus y over n all divided by 2. Uh, we can then eliminate i by, uh, y sorry by looking at the same relationship at the input we have got that i is the average of x i and y i so I've got i, the input, is equal to xi plus yi over 2. Uh, again, we can eliminate the i's in this case, in which and we end up with 2 is equal to x plus y, and therefore y is equal to 2 take away x. Uh, substituting that back into the equation for the output to input, we can therefore write that x plus 2 x over n all divided by 2 which gives us that uh, output to input ratio we can simplify that further and we can rearrange it to write n minus 1 over x plus 2 divided by 2 n uh, so that gives us our final equation for the output to input ratio for this diagram. Um, so in this implementation here we've got n is equal to 3, we've got that uh, 1 to 3 gearing ratio on the left there. So what we can do is uh, replace in this equation, we can say that for n equals 3 we have that the output to input is given by uh, 3 take away 1 times x plus 2 over 2 times 3 is 6 and we can simplify that further to give us um, x plus 1 over 3. Uh, so that's the equation that relates uh, output to input for the specific um, example here that I've been talking about and we can analyze that further by plotting that on a graph. 
So again, if we write that output input ratio for a specific example of uh, n is equal to 3, then we, like I said before, we have got x plus 1 over 3. And uh, to understand the equation a little bit better, it's easier to draw it on a, on a graph. Uh, so I'll just do that. So obviously it's a linear equation. Um, we can draw the axis here. So along the bottom here we've got x. On the top we've got O divided by I, which is the output to input ratio. Um, like I say, it's a linear graph. So when x is equal to 0, uh, we have a value of 1 third. Uh, being the output ratio, uh, when x is minus 1, then minus 1 plus 1 is 0, so at the minus 1 point we have got 0, and then the rest is simply a, a linear equation going through there. Now if we compare this equation to our actual implementation, like I said before, um, when x is equal to 0, that represents the case where we have got uh, this right path being held to 0, and we can turn that and we get the output as expected of one third, like the equation predicts. Uh, if on the other hand, other hand we hold down the left path, what that means is that the y path is now being held still. Uh, remember that uh, y is equal to uh, 2 minus x, which means that x is equal to 2 minus y. So in that case, if y is equal to 0, x must be equal to 2. So what we can do there is plot on the graph that for x is equal to 2, we end up with a gearing ratio here of 1, because, um, of course, 2 plus 1 divided by 3 is equal to 1. And that is exactly the gearing ratio that we get when we hold down uh, the left path. So what we can do is also draw the relationship for y, which is 2 minus x. So if we draw that on the diagram, uh, we have that for x equal to 0, we've got y is equal to 2, and we can draw the line roughly like this. So to explain how this works relative to the diagram, what's happening is when we're going in the forward direction, um, the ratchets only allow y to be uh, 0 or negative, so looking at the y graph here, it can only be 0 or negative, which means x can only be 2 or greater. Uh, so what will happen is it will operate at the x equals 2 uh, configuration, which means that the output ratio is 1 to 1 as expected. However, going in reverse, what that means is the ratchets only allow x to be 0 or less. Uh, and what that means is that it can operate, obviously, when x is 0, the output will be 1 third. However, when we hold down the output, in fact, x is allowed to move down to the minus 1 location where the output to input ratio ends up being 0. Um, and we can see that by turning this and we can see this in fact going in reverse rather than forward. And that explains why my reverse mechanism didn't work properly. Well I hope you liked this video and got something out of it. If you'd like to support this channel please like or subscribe and we'll see you next time.